An early spring blizzard makes its presence known across the region, with powerful wind gusts snapping power poles and leaving thousands without power over the weekend. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, hundreds of customers remained without power in the Panhandle this morning, following the weekend storm that brought heavy wet snow and high winds, bringing down power lines throughout the region. Emergency managers and power district officials say well in excess of 600 power poles were damaged or destroyed during the storms, meaning there are some rural residents who won't have power restored for days. Gehring lost all service during the storm, but was able to get power restored to most of the community during the course of the day Sunday. Damage to Western Area Power Administration lines caused issues for Gehring, as well as for customers of the Roosevelt and Chimney Rock Public Power Districts, some of which continued into Monday. Well, firefighters battled snow, wind, and fire early Sunday morning in a blaze that displaced a family of six. Scottsdale Rural Fire Chief Carissa Shank Grubbs says firefighters were called to a home near County Roads 19 and H around 4 a.m., finding a single level home about 60% involved. Initially, they were told there was a child inside, but Shank Grubbs says firefighters made entry, but after determining everyone had made it out of the structure, they retreated to a defensive posture. The blaze was brought under control in about three hours with mutual aid from the Gehring, Scottsbluff, Mitchell, and Morrill Fire Departments, and the scene cleared around 11 a.m. She said the house was deemed a total loss with damage to the structure and contents estimated at $300,000. No injuries were reported, and Firefighter Ministry was tending to the immediate needs of the family. State Fire Marshal Ryan Sylvester said the cause at this point was undetermined, but still under investigation. We'll have more news right after the break. Looking for free instead of fees? Platte Valley Bank can help you keep your finances moving forward with no ATM fees. Whether you're headed to the lake, the mountains, or just to the grocery store, you can enjoy the freedom of free ATM access anywhere, anytime. Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. To sum up the past 20 years in one word, exceptional. It's one of our core values. But our people have been truly exceptional. Our customer support has been exceptional. In 20 years, where will Allo be? When we started, we were just a business fiber company. Then the demand came from residential. Now the products of both business and residential just continue to expand. We've got to start with customers' needs and always work backwards. The customers will tell us and our teammates will take us there. Welcome back. LB 575, the Sports and Spaces Act, failed to gain first round approval in the Nebraska legislature on Friday. In general, the measure would have prohibited biological males from playing on girls' sports teams and keep them out of girls' locker rooms and restrooms. The bill's sponsor, Senator Kathleen Kauf, said protection of girls' athletics was important. Having separate athletic teams based on the biological sex of the athlete reduces the chance of injury to biological female athletes and promotes sex equality. It provides opportunities for biological female athletes to compete against their peers rather than against biological male athletes and allows biological female athletes to compete on a fair playing field for scholarships and other athletic accomplishments. Omaha Senator Megan Hunt said the bill was about discrimination and hate. It is not about protecting women. It's not about um, keeping women out of harm's way. It's about the danger and the power of the imagination of a bigot, Senator Kathleen Kauth. 
and those who would support a bill like this. Hunt's use of the term bigot was called out by Senator Lauren Lippincott, who said it was not appropriate for her to call another lawmaker names, and she was admonished by Lieutenant Governor Joe Kelly. After four hours of debate, a motion to invoke cloture needing 33 votes failed, 31 to 15, with Senators Merv Reepy of Ralston and Tom Brandt of Plymouth present but not voting. After the vote, Gearing Senator Brian Hardin issued a release regarding the vote, saying this bill isn't about what gender someone feels they align with or what they believe in their own mind, noting that being transgender is based on feelings, not biological facts. Sticking with the legislature now, as Speaker of the Legislature, John Arch, laid out his plans for the final days of the current session. He noted there were still more than 100 measures on select or final reading, with some needing cleanup language, and at least 10 that needed amendments to lower the fiscal impact. The La Vista lawmaker said there were really less than two days for lawmakers to get bills across the finish line. I've given direction to the reviser of statutes that they are authorized to prioritize amendments addressing cleanup improvement of a bill and amendments to decrease the fiscal impact of a bill. Amendments to add a bill to another bill will be drafted as time permits. Alternatively, I've instructed the clerk to only accept amendments to add another bill to a bill that had been drafted by the reviser's office. He will not be accepting floor amendments to add another bill to a bill. Arch also noted that at least two senators told him there were bills they intended to filibuster, but he reminded them that meant a bill those individuals did support might not get passed. He asked members to approach a bill sponsor in an effort to find compromise language that could keep legislation moving forward at a good pace. And the city of Scottsdale has given the green light for a local family to continue running the summer softball league at Lacey Park. The city council signed off on the management agreement with Chris and Ashley Guzman, who have been running the league for the past few years. City manager Kevin Spencer said last year they asked the council to lower the annual rental rate from $3,000 down to $2,000 due to an overall decrease in teams and participation. And the 2024 contract reflects that same lower amount. There's one term that they've added on to the end. Uh, I've reviewed this with the parks director, Matt Carpenter, and both uh, agree that this is a good agreement and encourage you to uh, sign it. Afterwards, the council unanimously voted in favor of approving the contract for the Guzmans to operate the softball league at Lacey Park. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, you're driving home our reputation. Time to check some early week sports here on the TV side. Coaching staffs have been announced for this summer's West Nebraska All-Star Volleyball and Football Games in Scotts Bluff. Let's look at the West teams first. Mitchell's Nick Cookshausen will be the head coach for the West squad. He'll have Scotts Bluff's Trey Allison, David Becker of Mitchell, plus Hemming Ford's Josh Dean on his staff. Cookshausen led Mitchell to their first ever playoff win and an appearance in the state quarterfinals last year. Gearing's Amanda Cochran, she'll be the West head volleyball coach. Moral Sarah Walker will be the volleyball assistant for the West team. Now for the East teams, football-wise, you've got Alma's Brendan Johnson as the head coach. His father, Scott, will be an assistant 
for the East this summer. Plus also Joe Beeler of Alma and Ty Spees of Loomis on the football staff for the East team. Haley Ryan from Overton will serve as the East volleyball head coach. Her assistant will be Tammy Kent of Sumner Eddyville Miller. Both games will be held on Saturday, June 1st in Scotts Bluff. Volleyball 11 a.m. at Cougar Palace. Football 3 p.m. at Bearcat Stadium. The WNCC baseball team continues their road series today at Lamar with another doubleheader. Cougars swept yesterday's game, scoring a total of 28 runs in the two games. Four total home runs on the day and the two starting pitchers, Hunter McCollum in Game 1, Adrian Short in Game 2. They combined to notch 18 strikeouts on the bump. We'll recap today's action for the Cougars coming up tomorrow at the radio sports desk. And we'll close with some Husker football. Little confusion, it was mentioned that this past Saturday was likely going to be a scrimmage, but head coach Matt Rule clarified and then talked a little bit about their practice. It looked like a really good practice. Um, you know, it's, it's always hard to tell when you have so many people there. You know, it's kind of like you're kind of spread out a little bit more, but um, I thought I, what I saw was a lot of guys making plays on the ball. Which, you know, I think Marcus did a really nice job talking to you guys the other day saying, you know, you look back to last year, you know, we have to just throw the ball better and we can't be minus 17 in turnover ratio. You know, we ran the ball well, we stopped the run well. Um, we were pretty decent on third down in some areas. So uh, really true focus on throwing the football has been important. Everyone talks about the quarterback when that happens, but you know, the guys getting open and catching the ball matter. And I saw a lot of plays made on the ball today, which uh, made me excited. They will scrimmage this upcoming weekend and then the spring game down the road just a bit on the 27th. That is the latest today from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. Take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. 
Fly United Airlines operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today and remember United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. Tired of feeling stuck? Not sure if you are on the right track? Platte Valley Bank can help keep your finances moving forward with checking account options to fit your lifestyle and an online account chooser to make finding the right account easy. Control your financial future with helpful budgeting tools and automatic savings plans. Now is the time to enjoy the ride with Platte Valley Bank. You belong here. And finally tonight with prom season getting into full swing, the Scotch Bluff Promise program is making it possible for everyone to dress to impress, even with the tightest of budgets. Director Debbie Franco says they provide dresses and suits to anybody that needs formal wear and might not be able to afford it. People have donated dresses, some are new, some are once used, and then we let the community know and the schools know that if anybody needs a dress, they can come down and we donate them and they can donate them or reuse them or give them away, just don't sell them. Some bring them back. They can come down, pick the girls got dresses, shoes, jewelry, and we have suits, shirts, ties, and uh, slacks for the boys. And they can come down anytime they call me and we get them fitted. And I also do some altering if they need altered. And that's a small donation if they want to. If not, that's okay too. She also stated that the program is for anyone in the area that might need a tire for a school function, not just Scotch Bluff. It's all surrounding areas. I've had girls here from Baird, Bridgeport, um, Torrington. So anybody that needs a dress for any occasion, not just for prom. I've had girls come down if they had a special, like going to a wedding or eat another dance or something at school. They're for anybody, for anything. The Scottsdale Promise program is located within the Scottsdale Elks Lodge, and you can call Debbie at 631-4952 to set up an appointment. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.